The headlines, Uhuru Kenyatta walked to on Wednesday. This is a headache that, for now at least, just won't go away. The story stretches back to the bloody months after Kenya's 2007 election. Kenyatta and several others were accused by the ICC of masterminding violence against their political opponents. He's always denied the charges. And the ICC prosecutors struggled to build a case because many witnesses simply backed out. Last month, Chief Prosecutor Fata Ben Suda asked for an indefinite adjournment of his trial, saying she lacked the evidence against Kenyatta. Many Kenyans thought that was the end of the matter. But in calling Kenyatta, the ICC has made clear its judges still have unfinished business with him. The issue remains divisive in Kenya. If he refuses to go, then it means we are violating some statutes that we obey. That is the Rome Statute. So because we don't know the outcome, then he'd rather go and listen to what is being said there than hear the outcome. Maybe at least the outcome can be good. So Noting that he has some protection from the African Union, I think he needs not go because there was no evidence. I, end I say let him go. If he doesn't go, there will be problems because they will issue a warrant of arrest. He will be blocked from many things. He won't be able to travel freely. As for the reasons why Kenyatta says he's too busy to go to The Hague next week, he cited a regional meeting in Kampala and Uganda's Independence Day celebrations. Neither impressed the judges. It's important to remember that Uhuru Kenyatta has only appeared once before the ICC, but even then, not as head of state. If he does decide to go, he will become the first sitting head of state to appear before the International Criminal Court, a fact that's eliciting high passions amongst Kenyans. Robert Nagela, CCTV, Nairobi, Kenya.